much of my life to advancing a partnership between our countries. Appropriate that uh, at the age of 75, I be permitted to reflect a bit on that relationship and speak at least briefly about its future. Begin with a few thoughts about our past. The thing that strikes me most, uh, particularly when I come here, is that uh, the world and our two countries and our relationship has changed so dramatically. When I arrived in Tokyo, as uh, Mr. Takagi has said, Japan as number one was uh, still very much in vogue. Now, with the Cold War uh, over and the Soviet Union gone, some might have expected uh, we would abandon our overseas alliances and return to tackle domestic problems. Of course, we did no such thing. And looking back, I don't recall uh, hardly anybody uh, proposing that we amend uh, the security treaty, let alone terminate it. We did begin to describe its mission as a hedge against uncertainties rather than a deterrent against a very specific threat. Even though uh, we didn't try and amend the treaty, our alliance during my tenure here experienced difficulties, troubles during the early 1990s. Relations in those days uh, were also fraught with difficulties. We managed a variety of quite complex negotiations which opened some markets and uh, relieved some political pressures, at least in Washington. Today, our relationship is substantially stronger and it's broader in scope than it was. And I would attribute this to uh, a number of developments. In the field of security, uh, Japan uh, reviewed and amended some of the self-imposed limits on your defense policy particularly prohibitions on overseas security responsibilities and overseas deployments of self-defense forces and restrictions on your ability to either transfer military technology or export some equipment to the United States. In the economic realm, meanwhile, the flows of goods and services and technology and capital between our countries expanded dramatically in volume and in value. The bilateral trade disputes between us diminished in their frequency and their intensity, and our Congress became highly preoccupied with our deficit with China, which I must say eased our day-to-day -day relations with Japan. On the American side, meanwhile, the Obama administration has uh, announced a number of steps designed to uh, provide a clearer and sharper focus on our interests in Asia. I think the description of this as a pivot back to Asia was an unfortunate misnomer, because you can't return really to a region that you never left. And nonetheless, we were highly distracted uh, for at least a decade uh, by events in the Middle East and in South Asia. I think the components of this uh, focus on Asia are clear. One is to revitalize our alliances in Northeast Asia, to raise modestly our security profile in Southeast Asia, and to seek to quarantine our position in this region from the looming cuts in the Pentagon budget. The second uh, is the effort to extend our economic cooperation in Asia by promoting free trade agreements through the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The third is to participate more actively in regional institutions. Bush administration was essentially an observer in uh, Asian regional institutions. The current administration has sought more actively to participate. Fourth, uh, we're utilizing more energetic diplomacy to encourage uh, political reforms in a pariah country with which we had very little to do for four decades, uh, Myanmar. Look at balance between engagement with China and hedging against its growing power. All these strands of policy, it seemed to me, 
enjoy bipartisan support in the United States. These are all, I think, uh, very encouraging trends. But I don't think they provide the basis for any complacency. Why? The first, I think our alliance is, is very solid, but we devote too much of our time in recent years to second tier base issues and insufficient time to the larger uh, environment, security environment in Asia and how we should properly respond to it. And our domestic situations have changed pretty drastically. So we both got some big time problems on our domestic front. We have a saying that when times are tough, the tough get going. And these are difficult times and our domestic circumstances, I believe, make broader collaboration between us more valuable and more necessary. A moment, I think, to pay more attention to the difficulties each of us face and to figure out how we can help each other in dealing with them. Now, one pertinent example comes immediately to mind in the field of energy security. I uh, read last week that your last nuclear reactor uh, was now down for normal maintenance. And as I understand it, that means that 30% of your, a major source of electricity is no longer available, at least for the time being. Natural gas is a logical alternative, as I understand it, uh, both your private sector and your government are actively uh, promoting the diversification of uh, sources, particularly including natural gas. Now, when we look at the situation as Americans, what can we do to help? Well, one thing, we can work together to enhance the safety of nuclear reactors. Uh, we can jointly look at ways in which to clean up uh, the uh, remains of the Fukushima disaster. We've had similar disaster, not a disaster like that, but we've had experience in cleaning up uh, nuclear facilities. We can, together, look for more efficient ways of utilizing energy. Though in that field, I think we have more to learn from you, surely, than you have uh, to learn for us. Most importantly, we can export LNG. Appropriate segue to another subject which has come up, namely liberalization of international trade through the Trans-Pacific Partnership. I personally uh, wish more effort was put into res revitalizing multilateral trade. Uh, Trade is best expanded when the rules apply to everybody. But it does seem that the Doha round is dead. However, Japan's approach uh, to the TPP appears quite tentative. And America's attitude toward Japan's participation seems a little ambivalent. I suppose this is understandable in view of the resistance of your agricultural interests and the anxieties of our auto industry. Those who are negotiating don't see this as a means of isolating or containing China. After all, how can you create a strong regional trade arrangement if the door is not open to the area's most vibrant economy? And for that matter, how likely is it that China would opt for eventual association with the TPP if they have no involvement in designing the rules for its operation. So I hope the current consultations that are taking place will uh, swiftly yield an invitation, formal invitation for Japan to join and a swift and affirmative response. It's not my job to advise uh, Japan how to deal with China, but I would like to offer just a brief uh, reflection on how I think it's appropriate for Americans to think about uh, the China challenge. Uh, the first uh, point I would make is I admire uh, what China has accomplished in the last three decades. Observe closely as China has rapidly increased its military capabilities on the margins of uh, its economic growth. In my view, though, China is no juggernaut that is about to roll over us. Uh, finally, though, China is no doubt changing the security equation in this region. Above all, it's rapidly building a blue water navy. 
and it's augmenting its capabilities in cyberspace and in outer space. And all these were fields in which we, uh, which we regarded as domains in which we didn't have much competition, you and we. I think it's healthy that we have initiated trilateral uh, consultations with India, with Australia, we talk with the Koreans. And I also believe that it's uh, quite appropriate to explore the possibilities for a trilateral dialogue with China to better understand the interests that motivate them and to avoid crises and to cope with incidents when they occur. The challenges we face are not unfamiliar, they're not insurmountable. We have a little time to get our house in order, but I think the question is whether we can muster the unity of purpose, the sense of urgency, and the political will to do so. And each of us will be in a better position to deal with the other if we do that and do it properly. If we do, I think our relations with China will prove readily manageable. More importantly, I think uh, the U.S.-Japan partnership, which is so vital to us, will be uh, quite secure. As energy in the region, I think it's perfectly uh, appropriate as a subject for regional cooperation. Uh, we're in the unusual position I described of uh, returning perhaps to export energy. Uh, but I've often thought for decades that uh, East Asia and the United States ten tended uh, to share the interests of importers and consumers of energy. And as such, we have a stake in keeping prices reasonably low have a stake in looking for appropriate alternatives, particularly renewable. We have a stake in uh, having arrangements in place to deal with emergencies. We have an interest in dealing with the environmental byproducts of uh, energy production. So there are plenty of things on which we uh, can, can uh, beneficially discuss. And I think, uh, unfortunately, in the global institutions that deal with energy, the IEA, while well, the U.S. and Japan and Korea have been members as a result of being OECD members, there was a curious uh, provision when the IEA was established that uh, membership in the OECD seemed to be a prerequisite to joining the International Energy Agency. And the result of that has been that a lot of consequential countries in Asia are not members. So the global institutions have uh, misrepresent not misrepresentation, but uh, insufficient uh, representation. And the regional dialogue until recently has been not particularly active. So I, I hope uh, your recommendation that uh, this be high on the agenda for the East Asian Summit is one that's realized. It seems to be entirely appropriate. I think uh, China is very different uh, than the Soviet Union, uh, mainly because throughout the history of our relation, post-war history of our relationship with the Soviet Union, they were a, a military power of recognized strength, and we had virtually no economic relationship with them at all. So we start uh, with a big stake in managing our relationship with China differently because we have huge equities in a peaceful management of a relationship that is so broad economically and, and across the board. And I think there's a bigger disparity in our power with China than there was with the Soviet Union. In the end, the Soviet Union proved to be quite brittle society and was weaker than most of our analysts assumed. With China, I think we may tend to exaggerate their capabilities at this point because we kind of make a linear extrapolation of what they've done in the last 30 years and assume they'll continue progressing at the same rate, which I think is very unlikely. We have a bigger stake in managing things peacefully, and uh, so far I think we're, we're doing reasonably well. I think the trick will be to, in the current year to prevent our election politics from souring the atmosphere. I think uh, there haven't 
both parties have taken shots at the Chinese. They've been relatively modest by historical standards.